What is up guys? It's your boy Rick. I haven't made a video in a year. Kak is here. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel and let me know what you think my next intro should be. That comment section, it's absolutely wild. All right, today we're going to be taking a look at all of the different exotic weapons and armor that came out during 2021. So that's during the season of the Chosen, season of the Splicer, season of the Lost and the 30th Anniversary Update, and narrowing them down to the five most impactful, the five best exotics of the year that are the ones you really want to have moving forward into the new year and the Witch Queen. And so, let's get started here. Now first we have two honorable mentions, two really great exotics that didn't quite make the list, and the first one, it's gotta go to the Dead Man's Tail Scout Rifle. Now for a good portion of the year, this absolutely dominated PvP, especially due to its exotic catalyst that gave it incredible hip fire accuracy. People were beaming you from across the map with this thing absolutely devastating in PvP. In PvE, it never really found a foothold, and especially now it has been nerfed somewhat substantially for PvP. It's still quite good, but nowhere near the absolute terror it once was, but again, deserves an honorable mention. Now the next honorable mention I have here uh, for the armor is the Boots of the Assembler exotic leg armor for the Warlock. So what these are going to do is when you're standing in a healing or an empowering rift or a Well of Radiance I believe too, it's going to send out Noble Seekers that will go and hit nearby allies giving them healing or empowering them to do more damage. This is absolutely incredible. It means that you can put yourself, you know, maybe you're doing a raid, maybe you're doing a six player activity in the middle of where all your allies are around doing the mechanics or whatever, put down one healing rift and heal all your nearby allies who are way outside the range of a normal healing rift. So it gives you a lot of utility as a support player and I have used these in raids and pretty high level content, but they haven't really caught on as much as a lot of people thought they would and generally people are still going with other options for the Warlock. Now of course this may change going forward and these are undeniably good exotics but just not quite good enough to hit the top five. Okay moving on from there let's get to the top five. Now remember I am a mainly PvE player so these will have a bit of a PvE slant however of course PvP is considered as well. And coming in at number five we have the Omnioculus exotic exotic chest armor for the hunter. Holy crap, these things have made a huge difference in terms of end game content for hunters. I see the Omnioculus and I use the Omnioculus all the time when doing Grandmasters. It's one of the best things you can possibly put on if you want a build that is focused around invisibility, giving you two smoke bombs that are going to give you extra damage resistance for you and your allies when invisible. And when you make your allies invisible, you get a huge chunk of your smoke bomb back so you could do it again more often. Oh, and this all goes right in the strategy that you pretty much already wanted to be doing, using Bottom Tree Night Stalker in order to have that group invisibility option, to be able to pass through a complete section of a Grandmaster, right? This is so darn good, and I think it will really continue to be good, especially because, you know, Void subclasses are being remade with the Witch Queen, so you're gonna have a lot more options as to what to combine with invisibility smoke bombs. So moving off from there guys, the number four slot I think has to go to the Agers or the Augers or the Schmaugers, whatever you guys want to call it, Scepter Exotic Trace Rifle. This thing slaps. It came out only just this season with Season of the Lost, but oh my goodness, this is by far the most effective stasis weapon we have in the game. Now with the IS Luna with Headstone, there's a little bit of competition, but when it comes to freezing enemies, the Aegir Scepter is just so far above the rest. Like being able to kill one guy and then everyone around him is just completely frozen solid. It is just so insane when you combine it with stasis subclasses. 
if you're playing, you know, a Revenant Hunter, a Shadebinder Warlock, especially Shadebinders, you already want to be using a Shadebinder a lot of the time in endgame content. You know, that Bleak Watcher is unbelievable, even as high as Grandmaster Nightfalls and Master Raids and Master Dungeons and all that stuff. It's so darn effective. And then combining that with the Scepter to just freeze everyone to benefit massively from an infinite amount of stasis shards to get all this extra synergy because of your fragments and aspects it is just crazy crazy good and i've used this thing up to grandmasters i really expect it to continue having a presence moving forward it's just such an easy and powerful combo when you are playing a stasis subclass However, it's time to move on to the number three slot, and that goes to the Curas of the Falling Star exotic chest armor for the Titan. Guys, holy crap, has this exotic made a difference for me personally during 2021. It's probably my most used Titan exotic of the year. Once it came out, it went on and just so many activities want you to use this thing. It's going to add a significant amount of damage for your Thunder Crash, and you're gonna gain an overshield the farther you fly when you do eventually hit that target. So not only does it give you just an insane extra killing potential with your Thunder Crash, like this thing can one-shot kill certain bosses and lost sectors and so on, especially if you direct impact them, but when you do use your Thunder Crash to go into a dangerous area to kill a champion, a mini boss, whatever, that overshield is gonna let you then get out of that situation if there are more or additional adds nearby that you aren't able to kill. So it's gonna give you that extra killing potential, but also gives you extra survivability. It's really everything you want. And this is doing for Titans, you know, what the Celestial Nighthawk and later the Star Eater Scales that was in contention for this list until it got nerfed to crap, did for the Hunter, giving you so much extra power for your super. And so you have scenarios, end game scenarios, like the Vault of Glass Raid, where you're getting so much more supers. Titans with Kurosses are really, really good at being able to absolutely clap Atheon in the end of that raid. Like, it is a legitimate strategy to use a bunch of Titans with Kurosses and just do so much damage with your super. And we've talked about high level content and this is great in high level content, but this is also so darn good in lower level content. If you're doing strikes, if you're doing, you know, six player match made activities, all that stuff, dares, whatever, just using a Kuros is so darn useful. You're gonna be such a help to your team, absolutely decimating the champions, the, the bosses at the end, the mini bosses, whatever that come around. You see this a lot for good reason. However, guys, it's time to move on to spot number two on our list and that goes to the Vex Mythoclast Exotic Fusion Rifle, the iconic Destiny 1 Exotic returned with the Vault of Glass Raid as a reward. And when it first came out, this thing sucked. Like, no lie, this thing was not good, but Bungie gave it the buff of all buffs, and oh my goodness, the Vex Mythoclast just took over. Not only was it just unbelievably good in PvP, becoming one of the top meta choices, even in like Trials of Osiris, people were absolutely rocking the Vex Mythoclast like no tomorrow, it did then receive a slight nerf to its aim assist, but you still see the Vex Mythoclast being used in PvP, in the Crucible, to great effectiveness to this day, but also, oh my goodness, it took over PvE. With the introduction of the Particle Deconstruction Seasonal Mod that gave fusion rifles and linear fusion rifles increased damage with continuous shots, well, the Vex Mythoclast being basically a primary fusion rifle and being the only primary fusion rifle, like this thing was just such a centerpiece to so many different PvE builds because you could get to times five in particle deconstruction almost instantly with a Vex Mythoclast. And then you have a primary weapon that's dealing 40% more damage. Oh, and this weapon by itself does an insane amount, amount of damage in PvE even without particle deconstruction. So you were clapping mini bosses with a darn primary, no problem. This thing really took over the meta. It's likely not to be as good when the seasonal mod moves out, but you know, right now ending 2021, it's still such a huge force in the meta. You can't have it any lower than number two. 
But it is time to move on from there to the number one spot. And guys, it has got to go, even though it was just introduced at the end of 2021, to the Gallahorn Exotic Rocket Launcher. This thing is just unbelievably good. Like, it's... Bungie really did it justice when they reintroduced it. It was one of the best weapons of all time in Destiny 1, especially when it was kind of first coming out. It did eventually get nerfs and so on, but holy crap, this thing just slaps. I mean, look at Dares of Eternity. If you do certain things, you get the Star Horse's favor, which gives you constantly regenerating heavy ammo. The right choice is the Galahorn. Do you know how little... That's actually said about Destiny. Usually you have like, you know, you could pick this or this or this. No, with with that, you should pick the Galahorn 100% of the time. It is so good, especially with its exotic catalyst at clearing out ads. One shot is just completely devastating and will get you like 20 kills on ads. It's just insane how much extra damage those wolf pack rounds do and all of that stuff. So it's just unreal in PVE. I mean, Six Galhorns can take down raid bosses. I took it through the entire Last Wish raid and it just decimated. But the funny part is that Six Galhorns, it's not even the best thing to use. It has an exotic perk that gives its wolf pack rounds to other people using legendary rockets. So you can bring your friend in who just started the game and just you using a Galahorn will buff your allies' weapons as well and actually output even more damage than six Galahorns. Like, it's really the perfect weapon for so many things in PvE and it's also incredible in other activities. I was playing Gambit recently. Oh, this thing is so much better than Eyes of Tomorrow, it's not even funny. Like, intrinsic tracking, even if you miss, the wolf pack rounds are almost a guaranteed kill to anyone who's in their radius. Like, it is just so devastating in Gambit. And even in the Crucible, if you're not using an exotic special or primary, why not throw on the Galahorn? It's kind of like when people used to use and still use, frankly, the Wardcliffe Coil as their exotic in PvP because it's basically a guaranteed kill. Like, if a guy is on your screen and you shoot a Wardcliffe Coil, there's a 99% chance that guy is dying, right? And, and the guy next to him is probably dying too. The Galahorn basically works the same way, it's just significantly better at longer ranges. Again, inherent tracking, the wolf pack rounds. If you do kill anyone with the wolf pack rounds, the Catalyst will spawn additional rock. It's just devastating in every aspect of the game. A truly phenomenal exotic. Just probably one of the best, if not the best, overall exotics that you can really slot into any build and it'll be good. This thing slaps Galahorn number one. So guys, that is it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. Did you disagree with any of my picks? Do you think the rankings should be different? Do you think an exotic I didn't mention deserves its place on this list? Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please subscribe. If you want to keep up with the latest and greatest Destiny 2 and channel activity, be sure to follow my Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.